Hello everyone and welcome to Building Web Applications. My name is Steve Bishop from ProgrammingMadeEasy.com. Today, we're going to be talking about relative versus absolute path. So we have our file in our file system. And in this case, let's say that we had an index file that was located in the home folder inside of a project folder on our desktop. Well, this path that we see here is the absolute path. This is absolutely where we can find the file on our hard drive. But it gets a little trickier when you're trying to reference one file from another. Let's say that we had an iframe file and it was in a folder called frames. Now the frames folder was inside the same project folder as my index. However, because it's in a different folder, I need to find some way of expressing the path from my index file to the iframe file. Now I could express this as once again the absolute path, but that brings about some challenges. Because once I move my application from off of my computer and put it onto someone else's computer, the absolute path will be incorrect. My project may not exist on the project folder of a desktop folder of someone named Steve. This is especially true if I plan on deploying it to some sort of cloud service. Now, there is a lot of commonality between my index.html file and my iframe file as far as where it's located on my hard drive. They're both underneath this project folder. So maybe I can use that to my advantage. And that's where we use something called the relative path. From the index file, I could go up a directory and going up a directory would put me inside the project folder. Then I can use the frames folder and then reference the iframe.html file. So you'll notice that this relative path starts with a dot dot forward slash. Now when you're dealing with pathways, you want to use the forward slash to indicate going down a folder or going down to a specific file. In Windows, we typically see the backslash but when it comes to web development, you should always be using the forward slash. And this will work on any sort of operating system like Linux, Apple, or Windows. So here's my relative path to the iframe.html file from my index.html file. Now, once again, that dot dot forward slash means go up a parent directory. You'll often see also just a single dot followed by the forward slash. And this indicates starting from my current directory. So whatever the directory is that we're currently in for that file, that's where I want to start. But the dot dot forward slash with two periods indicates that I need to go up the parent directory. Now you can do this in sequence. You could do dot dot forward slash dot dot forward slash, and that would actually go up two directories. So when you're looking at the relative path, the dot dot forward slash means go up one parent directory, whereas the dot forward slash means starting in the current directory. Let's see how we can use relative pathways to our files inside of our HTML documents. Right now, my iframe and index files are both inside of my desktop folder that we can see here on my desktop. And this is really not the best place to put this project. Instead, I should create some sort of project folder to put all of my project files inside of. Now, in fact, what I typically do is I go to the C drive of my app of my computer here, and I like to create on my C drive a new folder called projects. Now, this is entirely up to you. You can name it whatever you'd like, but this is just kind of my convention. Now, inside of the projects folder, I will add a subfolder. So let's go ahead and add a new subfolder here. I'm going to call this building web apps. And now inside of my building web apps, I'd like to move the index and iframe files. So I'm just going to go ahead and select these and drag and drop them under the building web apps. Now this of course is going to mess up what's going on here in Visual Studio Code. So I'm going to close Visual Studio Code so that it doesn't interfere with what we're doing here. Now inside of my building web apps, I'd like to actually organize my project even a little bit more. So I'm going to add a folder here that's going to be called frames. So I'm just going to call it frames. 
Then I'm going to add another folder that I'm going to call home. Now, how you organize your project is really entirely up to you. There are several conventions out there, but that's not really the purpose of this video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this iframe into my frames folder, and I'm going to go ahead and move my index file into the home folder. Now, typically, you might see an index file at the root of our project. So inside of my building web apps application, I would probably typically have an index file. But I really wanted to show you how to use the dot dot forward slash in a relative path to show you how to go up different directories. All right, so let's once again open up Visual Studio Code. And we're going to open up this new project folder within Visual Studio. So it's still trying to open up the last directory we had open, and that's not really where our files are anymore. So let's go ahead and go to Open Folder. And for Open Folder, I need to once again go to my Projects folder on my C drive. And under there is my Building Web Apps folder. And I'm just going to go ahead and select right from there. Let's go ahead and close the welcome screen. Don't really need that. And I can move this outline down. I don't really need this either. All right, so inside of my home folder is where the index.html file is. And then, of course, inside of my frames folder is where the iframe.html file is. So back here in our index.html file, we had a reference to iframe.html. And believe it or not, this was actually using the relative path because we were just specifying the iframe.html file, which at the time existed in the same folder as our index.html file. So we didn't need to give it any sort of special pathing. We just simply said, go find the iframe.html file that should be in the same directory. But now that we've moved the files into separate directories, we're going to have to be explicit about where to find this iframe.html. So one of the things I could do is use absolute path. So if I go back to my building web apps and then go into frames, actually, I think I was already there, right? I can just take this directory. I can just go up here and I can copy this directory and I can go in here and I can simply paste it and do a backslash there. And we can even use the windows backslash. This should work. And if we save this and go and view our page, so I'm just going to right click and go to open in default browser. This should work. It should still open up our iframes. Okay. Uh, looks like I have a G in here. Whoopsie. Have a little typo. All right. So this is the iframe content. Right now, it goes, it opens up directly to the iframe, right? It's picking this directory. Now we have a link here that's not going to work. If I try to click on this, it's going to say it can't find it because, of course, it's not actually referencing the full path. So how do I get a relative path to this same iframe? Well, we need to identify which folder we're currently in for the index.html file. Because what we're saying is, from this index.html file, I want the path relative to where this index.html file is, where I can then find the iframe.html file. What's the relative path to this index.html? So the way that we do this is, you need to figure out starting from this folder, which, turn, which turns out to be the home folder, how do I then get to the frames folder where our iframes.html file is? And that requires that we go up a directory from the home directory to our building web apps directory. And the way that we do that is we simply use the dot dot forward slash. So we'll say dot dot forward slash. And you'll notice that Visual Studio Code actually gives us this little helpful IntelliSense that tells us, hey, once you go up a parent directory, the directories that are there are frames and home. Now, I want to go to the frames folder. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit tab here to select frames. And then there's one file in there, the iframe.html. So I'll once again hit tab. And Visual Studio Code really gave me some helpful hints to make sure that I'm going to the right file. That file actually exists. It went out on my hard drive and found, based upon the path that I was going, it helped me find that file. So let's go ahead and save this. And we'll go and refresh our uh, index.html file. OK, so it found it based upon the absolute path to start with. Now when I click on the iframe, notice that down in the bottom here, it'll pop up the 
actual exact path, even though it's not what I've said is the absolute path, right? It's figuring out what the absolute path is without me actually specifying the absolute path. So if I click on this, it's gonna use the absolute path to go ahead and this is the iframe content. And if you don't believe me, cause it didn't really do anything, let's switch back to red.com and make sure that that appears in our window. And then once again, I can click on iframe and instead of getting a 404, can't find this thing, it does say this is the iframe content. Now, just to take this one step further, let's say uh, that I wanted to actually split out my frames inside of the frames folder. Uh, so let's go ahead and add a new folder. And in here, what we're gonna say is, I'll just do my, uh, my iframe. And I'm gonna rename this my iframe to just my iframe still keeping it HTML, but I'm gonna move it down into my iframe. So now we've got this folder structure where if we look inside of Visual Studio Code, we can actually see it much better. We can see how from home, we have to go up to frames and then inside of frames is my iframe and then that's where the my iframe is. So if we go here to the relative path, we should be able to get, once again, there's my, I, my iframe folder and this then has my iframe.html. So this all really kind of works well. But what if we want to go the opposite direction? Now that we've moved this my iframe down, and I'm going to actually fix this relative path as well for what we've got here so that it loads properly. Okay, we'll save all those changes. But what about, oops, file, save. There we go. Okay, so what happens then if we want to reference backwards? What if we want to take the iframe page, right? This iframe that we've got here, let's close that. My iframe, there we go. So now let's say that we want to show a link that will once again open up index.html. How do we make that kind of reference? So we need to do an anchor tag and the href here needs to point back to where the index file is. And we want to do this with the relative path. We never want, we, we really want to avoid absolute path at all costs. We should be doing relative path for everything. So let's once again, try to determine the pathway that we need to specify to go from my iframe and get to index.html. And by the way, this works on HTML files or the source attribute on images or really any file. If you're trying to make a reference to any file, in your project, you're gonna use the same process of a relative path using dot dot forward slash to go up a parent directory. Okay, so we know from our index.html that we can use dot dot forward slash to go up a parent directory from home to the building web apps. And then from there we can go my iframe and then my iframe.html. But going back, that means we actually need to go up two directories, right? We're starting in this my iframe folder. We need to go up not just one parent folder, because that would just put us in frames, but we need to go up two parent directories to building web apps. So how do we do that? Well, that's just gonna be simply this, dot, dot, forward slash, dot, dot, forward slash. And now we can see, once again, we get IntelliSense saying, hey, would you like to go to frames or home? We wanna go to the home folder this, this time. And then there's our index.html file. And we can just go ahead and add a little home page here. We'll click save and we'll go back to our browser, refresh, and now home page would simply open up home page and we can just keep going. Uh, we got some inception going on here, right? We can continue to open up the home page internally. Special thanks to these members who have decided to become members of the channel. Thank you. If you're interested in becoming a fellow member, all you have to do is click on the join button on either the channel or underneath any one of my videos. If you don't see the join button, then unfortunately that means that it is simply not available in your country. But thank you for thinking of me anyway. Yeah.